Okay, so today we are doing what's called regression analysis. So we did uh, the regression line, so we're going to go a bit deeper into that to uh, talk about what that all means. analysis. So we get the regression line from that and then once we have that regression line uh, we can determine a few things from that. those things that we can determine or one of the things that tells us about is the slope. Alright, and so <clears throat> the slope of course if remember our RV oops, will be equal to the slope times the EV plus the intercept. And so when we're talking about the slope, it's this number that's in front of our EV variable. And uh, what this slope tells us is about the average change in the RV um, with the change in the EV. So one unit in particular. So one unit of change in the EV tells us what the average change in the RV would be. So that's what the slope does, tells us. Um, and they do ask, have asked questions a number of times um, in the year 12 exams about actually uh, saying what in the particular case of that example, what the slope tells us. But in general, it tells us the average change in the RV, whatever it is for that particular question, for, and this gets important, so I'll put it up in capitals, so one unit change in the EV. So depending on what our <coughs> problem is, what the EV and the RV are in that problem, um, you would talk in those terms of course. So the slope, one unit change in the EV average change in the R lead. So it could be going up, could be going down. Alright, the intercept that's this other bit here on the end there, what does that tell us? It tells us the average uh, value of the RV when the EV is zero.
All right, so let's have a look at an example where we use those and describe those things. So this example, we've got an age of second-hand cars, depending on the year. So here we've got equation of regression line, the price of a second hand car can be predicted from its age, and there it is, 35,100 minus 3,940 times the age. And we're asked to interpret the slope. Okay, so our slope is this number here in front of our EV and that number is negative 3940 so what does that represent in terms of the car's price that for every year so it's always one unit of this in this case it's age so it's year so for every year what happens on average to the price of the car, it will increase or decrease De by how much? Right, so it's as simple as that. So on average, uh, the price of these cars Um, drops by $3,940 each year. Alright, so you need to make sure you use the word average in there. It's the price of a second hand car. Yes, how old it is will determine, but there'll be other things like how long, well it's been looked after, how much it's been used, and so on. Whether it's been in an accident, those sorts of things. So it's important you can use the word average in there. Alright, so part B of this question is about the intercept. So the intercept, so they interpret the intercept. So 
So the intercept is the other number that is there. So here's our intercept. 35,100. So that 35,100 would represent what? The, the average price of the car? Starting price, the new price, car price, yeah. Alright, so this intercept is when the age is zero. So again, we use the average word in there, so on average. Alright, if you're particularly good at negotiating, you might be able to get a discount from the car yard. And in this case, because we're talking about cars and the intercept is when age equals zero, so cars of zero age would be new cars, so we would try and use those kind of uh, words. Thirty-five thousand one hundred. All right. The other thing we can do with our regression line is we can uh, use it to make predictions. Mr. Senator, what are you trying to say there? Sorry. On average, the price of when you. Was oh, oh, sorry, you should say these cars. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. How's that? Is that better? <laughs> yes, that's a little better. <laughs> that's what I was trying to say, Sam. These cars win you. It's old age, Sam. That's all good. Short term um, memory loss when you get old. Forget what you were going to write. You're not that old. Thanks, Sam. All right. All right, we go on now with this next bit. All right, so we can also use our regression line to make predictions. So if we use the same, I'll use the cars thing the same. So let's have a look at an example. Um, so for, for these cars, for the cars in the example above. Check the price of a car that's say five and a half years old. So if we look at this, five and a half years old, here's our equation. So we'd say that the price, prediction of the price of 35,100 when it was new, and we're taking off $3,940 for each year, which is five and a half or 5.5. And so when we do that, Thirteen thousand four hundred and thirty. Probably say how reliable is that? Oh yeah, well, probably reasonably reliable. Mm -hmm. 
Alright, so there's two types of predictions, and this type of prediction would be a class of what we would call interpolation. Um, so interpolation is when you're predicting in your data. And because you're predicting within your data, um, those sorts of predictions are reasonably reliable. Interpolation. So the example above is interpolation. Interpolation provides reasonably reliable results. So if we have a graph, for example, there's my graph. Put in a put in a uh, <clears throat> regression line. We get that number, and uh, I want to maybe make a prediction here. Across. So I'm using my prediction, so this prediction that I'm making from here would be interpolation. Because we've got the point we're looking at is in between, in the middle of all of this stuff that we use to get our, then it's reasonably reliable. We can use another type of we can predict also down here, for example. Now if I come up here and go across here, this would be what we call extrapolation. An extrapolation, we're looking here at this point, this, this EV value, which is outside of the data that we've used. So, this extrapolation may or may not be um, reliable because its prediction relies upon that the trend continues like that, that it doesn't change in some way. Alright, so extrapolation is when you're looking outside where your data is. Interpolation you're looking inside your data. Inside your data, reasonably reliable. Outside the data, you're not sure. May or may not be reliable. So I need to write a bit about extrapolation. <laughs> Again, with interpolation and extrapolation, lots of exam questions in the past have uh, been in relation to these things. So predicting outside. Okay. 
다음 셋. 10-year-old car. So if we're using that same <clears throat> thing as before, um, which was the price, I think it was 35,100 minus 3,940, and this time I'm multiplying by 10. And when you work this out, this is telling you that uh, your car's worth, uh, the price of a 10 year old car is negative $430. <laughs> In which case the uh, car, car dealer's paying you to take it away. Probably not reliable. I don't know, it sounds like a um, good deal to me. Sounds like a good deal to me too. So in this case, it's probably not reliable. So you need to take each of those for extrapolation. You need to take each one on their merit. For this one, you know, quite clearly it's probably not a reliable predictor for when cars get very old. So there must be probably some other sort of association, not a linear one. <coughs> um, which then leads us, if there is some other sort of association, not a linear one, how do we find that out? And so one of the ways we find that out is using a thing called residuals. And can anyone remember what the residuals were? The distance between the regression line and the points? Yep, that is correct. So what we can do is look at Residuals. So I'll just do another rough sketch here. So you can see how. Oops. You can see our thing is our regression line Run through there like that. And so <clears throat> the vertical distance, this distance here between the point and the line. These things here, that's our residual. Now, as you can see, some points are below the line, so those residuals there could be uh, negative if they're below the line. Some are above the line, so they would be negative, uh, positive, I should say. And then you might get some that are right on the line. Alright, so... So is it positive or negative if it's on the line? On the line it would be zero. zero. Yeah. I'm sorry, that's okay. So our residual value is our actual value. We 
minus our predicted value. And our predicted value, of course, is what the line tells us. So, they can be positive, or negative, or zero. What that tells us is that the point is above the regression line. And what we can do is we use our calculator and we can plot the graph of the residuals. side off because that's where the projection is going to be. Okay. All right, so residual plots. So we go to our, our stats. Menu, <coughs> excuse me, stats menu on our calculator, and then we've got um, we put out EV, which in on the worksheet there, um, it's selling price. So then we put the selling price in list one.
And then in list two is our sales volume. In thousands, so that's 400,000, this is 300,000 and so on. Same length. Alright. <clears throat> so, again, if you always put your EV in this list and your RV in this list, um, when you go through other things, that's normally how the default is set up. They treat this as your X or your R, uh, EV and your Y or your, your EV. That's the default, and then we don't have to worry too much about other stuff. Alright. So, to find the residuals, what we need to do is, is go through something like what we've done before. We need to calculate the regression line. So we're going to our calc menu, go to regression, linear reg. Now you'll, so this is what we've done before when we to find the line. So our X list is list one, Y list is list two. And you notice this one here, bottom one here, copy residual, and it's off. So we need to turn that on and tell it to put the residual somewhere. And so you notice on your, your list thing, options you've got here, on, well it's all very well but it's not putting it anywhere if you put it on, or you could put it at these lists. So you'll notice list one and list two are not on here because they're already being used. All right, so let's put it in list three. So this is now when it works out the regression line, it's now going to calculate what those residuals will be for each data point, and then it's going to put it in list three. So as before, when we click OK, it comes up with all that information about the, uh, the line, and the information about the line is Y equals A, and A is... Maybe 1.71 times x plus 463.99. Alright, and don't forget we need to put these in terms of our so sales and the selling price. Alright, so when we write that down, we need to make sure we've got it in terms of the variables or the, that we've been given in our question. And then if we go OK again, click OK, and uh, no, we put that in a very good spot. Right, no one, triple over there. Um, so now you'll notice here, there's some numbers in list three. So these are the residuals. So for selling price of 60, the actual is 400, but this regression line predicts a different value, and so it's 39.1. <clears throat> and so, well, which is 39.1 thousand, because remember, sales in thousands. Um, because it's positive, the actual is higher than what this line predicts. All right, I need to run through that again and understand. All right, so the next one is negative. So this value here is lower than what the line predicts. All right, and then underneath it gives our normal Here's our regression line, here's our data points. All right, so the first one, there we are, see, as I said here, is our first data point, positive residual, the second one, negative residual, and so on. All right, we can 
plop a graph of the residuals. That's what I was talking about. So we don't want this normal graph. I'll get rid of this stuff here. So what we need to do is we need to then go to our setting graphs and set a sort of graph. So when we're going to do a residual, the best idea is to use an XY line. And that's going to join up the points and it's going to make it easier to see if there's a pattern. Alright, so let me cancel that. So this one up here. One here, how we get to choose what sort of graph. So we want an XY line, and we're going to we want to do the residuals. So the residuals were in list three. So we need to change our Y list to list three. Alright, we're still going to use the X's because we're still going to use, in this case, the selling price. But we're going to graph the residual. So change to list three. <coughs> Go set. Nothing happens, of course, until you tap on the uh, draw the graph, please. Ah, right, that's all right. And that's what we get. Now, notice I've got this other line here. This other line here appears if you, you go up here on the set graph. See the bottom here? It says previous reg. That box is ticked. So that's what this is. It's a previous. So I think you un uncheck that. And now it's gone. All right, and so this is our residual plot. There are the residuals. So in this case, sort of up and down a bit, not really any pattern. So when you don't have a pattern as such, um, that then indicates that linear is a good option in terms of um, the form. So in this case, the linear is a good option. All right, so, however, if there is a pattern, say it goes like this or like this or some other, then linear is possibly not the best option. All right, so let's have a look at. So in terms of here, this is a Positive residuals are up here, negative residuals are down there. And so I'm going to just draw some graphs there where I have positive and negative. And so and then there's our X or our EV. And so if you just have a random you know, random pattern like this one here, some random sort of pattern that would indicate um, a linear. So no obvious pattern, Oops. no clear pattern. So no clear pattern. Uh, points are random above and below. And so what that indicates is probable Association. Another example might be like this one. All right, 
right, so this one here, you can see when we start down the left, it gets, goes up and then it comes back down. There's some sort of pattern. It's increasing, then it's decreasing, so there's some sort of pattern in our residuals here. Um, so the residual plot has a pattern. So if it has a pattern, um, that what that means is that we've got a probable non-linear association. All right, and then now I'll do another example. So there's an even stronger pattern. This, for example. Again, probable non-linear association. And so for these, what that means is we may need to do what's called transforming. Uh, the data to find a bit more about what the uh, association between those variables is. All right, so we don't need to worry about transforming today. We'll do transforming on Friday. All right, so is there anything anyone wants me to clarify about all that? Because that's a fair bit of stuff. All right, so we've got today and tomorrow. And so the exercises. Uh, exercises for C and for D. So exercise 4D, that's like the first part I did when I had that uh, equation for the cars, is, that's kind of stuff in 4C, and then 4D's using your calculator and drawing. I've got them separate on the work plan, but and I did my notes there to find it together, so we're doing it together. So today, rest of the day and tomorrow on those Friday, transforming the data, and I better not forget, like and subscribe. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Sam.